Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. This time, there will be no electronics theory and no lines of code. Today, you'll witness the birth of my pinball machine, the point where an idea takes shape and becomes reality. It all begins here. A journey made of lights, mechanics, and pure passion. Get ready, because from this very moment, the dream comes to life. First of all, a huge thank you for all the wonderful comments you left on episode 4. They truly moved me. Today, I am closer than ever to fulfilling my biggest childhood dream, building a real pinball machine just like the ones I used to see in the arcade. This time we're going big, so sit back and get comfortable. Because there's a lot to see. Every pinball machine has always had one fundamental goal, to entertain the player by keeping the ball constantly in motion. But have you ever wondered how the ball is made ready for a new launch once it's lost? It was only between the late 1960s and the early 1970s that the real protagonist appeared. The ball trough, an inclined channel where the balls line up, waiting to be pushed one by one into the shooter lane. A small masterpiece of engineering that works silently to give the player the magic of a new launch. But how did I build mine? This is my original project, a simplified version of that system, but at least it's my own design. It includes two coils, one for repositioning and one for launching the ball back into play, along with two sensors. I exported the model into Fusion 360 and extruded the shapes to create the guiding channel and a small ramp. Now however, I need to build this system on my playfield. First, I have to do something essential. I designed it so that I can choose what parts of the entire pinball machine's components to display. I hide all the layers and leave only those dedicated to laser cutting with through cuts. The problem is, I don't have such a large laser engraver, so how can I do it? And here comes the clever idea, cutting the playfield into two parts using this special layer. See? These are clamp joint interlocks, crafted manually. Of course, one of the two cuts needs an offset of 0.3mm to compensate for the material loss during cutting. So, we take a 1cm plywood board and start the engraving and cutting process. I had always dreamed of having a machine like this, back when affordable laser engravers didn't even exist. With the Atomstack craft, I made all the holes in two passes, lowering the head by 5mm, to achieve a perfectly clean through cut. Wonderful! I've completed the first part, and I must say it turned out beautifully. Now I move on to the second plywood board and start the second process. Done! This one also came out perfect. Here they are, ready. And now comes the most exciting part, joining them together with this super precise interlock. All it took was setting an external offset of 0.3 millimeters on the second part to achieve a press fit joint. Glue isn't even necessary. That's how strong the fit is. I'm really satisfied. Now it's finally starting to look like something serious. But there's a problem, though we'll solve it right away. The bottom surface is too small. So I just added a 2cm strip with the laser. That space is needed for the shooter, which we'll see later on. Once cut, I applied wood glue and secured everything with three long self-tapping screws. Now let's get back to the ball repositioning system, using this solenoid. Then I take the two PLA parts, including the small ramp. Alright, but what handles the repositioning? This small 12V coil. As you can see, I built a dedicated support for it. When the ball drops, the coil triggered by a sensor pushes it away. To prevent the balls from rolling back, I added this small ramp. But what if we don't have a 3D printer? I really did my best to make this project replicable and accessible to everyone, thanks to the service offered by JLC3DP, a Chinese company that perfectly embraces the spirit of DIY. With their 3D printing service, I was able to create most of the components of my pinball machine. Guys, I swear, once the project is finished, or even a few months earlier, all the 3D files will be available for download from my website. And if you don't have a 3D printer at home, you can simply rely on this service. I can guarantee it's truly professional, with outstanding quality. The result, compared to an ordinary home FDM printer, is a whole different story. All you need to do is upload your STL files on their website, and in just a few seconds you can check the prices, choose from a huge range of materials, and even inspect the model in section view to make sure there are no imperfections. And now, a little spoiler. Take a look at what's coming up in this very episode. All these parts have already been made and they form a large part of the pinball machine's mechanism. 
In addition to 3D printing, I also relied on their PCB service for making my circuit boards. If you're looking for a simple, affordable, reliable service, and especially if you are a new user, you can take advantage of a $70 super coupon to get your first prints for free. Do is click the link you'll find in the description or in the first comment. But now, back to our build. Let's move on to the ball launching mechanism. Using aluminum, after cutting and filing, I made this special arm where I insert a countersunk screw. I pass three washers as spacers and then lock it firmly in place. This screw is used to couple with the solenoid's plunger. Next, I need a bracket to hold the solenoid in position. In the end, this is how the system works. When powered, the coil pulls this small arm and performs two actions simultaneously. The first is to feed the ball into the playfield, either after a loss or at the start of a new game. The second is to stop the next ball from coming through. It still needs fine tuning, but the logic is working. The only thing left is to add a small rod to prevent the first ball from slipping out. Now it's perfect. Now, let's move on to the sensor. When it detects the ball, it repositions it according to the programmed logic. As you can see, I built a dedicated mount. To fix it, just one small screw is enough. When the ball stops, it aligns perfectly in front of the sensor. Let's test it. It works perfectly. The sensor detects the ball and the solenoid pushes it away. But to make the system fully automated, we still need to build the rails. I made these two wider, otherwise they wouldn't be visible. This way it's also easier for you to replicate. I must admit, I didn't expect them to come out this well. First, I lock these in place, then I move on to the outer rails, which I'll make in aluminum. Since they're straight, all I need to do is cut them to size. The only thing missing are the brackets, otherwise nothing would hold. Here they are, and they turned out beautifully. Look at that perfect joint. The inner part is wide and serves as a guide for the balls. And I really like this combination of PLA parts with fixed aluminum pieces. The two outer rails are slightly higher and now the repositioning system is complete. I'm very satisfied with how it looks on the outside too and the balls roll perfectly smoothly. Okay, now let's see how it works and what handles the automation. Here are the two main players, Arduino Uno and of course the MOSFET board for driving the coils. A cathartic moment, enjoy the mechanism. It works great, but something is still missing, the ball shooter system. Here it is, the little pinball shooter. Now the fun begins. You could easily dedicate an entire episode just to this. But let me show you how I built it in just a few steps. I designed it in Corel, then imported the 2D model into Fusion 360. I also created the ball stopper, straight to printing. Of course, printed vertically so the holes remain perfectly round using press fit dowel pins. I take a steel tube with an internal diameter of 5mm and press fit it into the two supports with the help of a drill driver. Inside, a 5mm rod must slide perfectly with just a slight tolerance, otherwise it won't move smoothly. I insert a long spring, a shorter one and two clamps to test the feedback. I also place the ball lock, which thanks to these two small parts keeps the ball in position, ready to be launched. Approved. Now let's make it pro. I mark the point with a blue marker to place a retaining ring. But the ring needs a groove. And how do you make a groove? With the lathe, of course. Here's the modified lathe, perfect for this job, along with a dedicated tool. Naturally, I go by feel. I'm not a professional turner, uh, but luckily it worked out fine. And now the spring no longer slips out. Then I move to the other end because I need to add a knob. My idea was to use a beautiful chrome metal knob, but the collar was too big and I didn't like it. So here's what I did. I used an M4 screw. First, I cut away four sections to reduce it, then mounted it on my drill to roughly bevel the edges. Finally, I went back to the lathe to finish it properly and achieve the desired result. Much better. I take the rod again from the machine side and use a die to cut an M4 thread, onto which I screw the chrome knob. Spectacular! I must say I really love the result. 
built in just a few hours, but the satisfaction is huge. And the ball shooter is finally done. Now we can make dynamic and very precise shots, just like on real pinball machines. Okay, let's mount it on the actual playfield. I fix the ball lock with two screws, then the shooter with three self-tapping screws. I reassemble everything. Guys, what am I building here? I'm really satisfied. But to make it playable, I need to fix the problem with these holes. I simply fill them with special inserts. The lights you've already seen in previous episodes snap in place with a press fit. They must sit perfectly flush so the ball can move freely. Honestly, it almost looks like a professional product. Now I make the two guides found on every pinball machine. To complicate things, I decided to make them out of aluminum. Starting from a scrap piece. Having a CNC allowed me to produce these parts, which otherwise would have taken me hours of work. Don't worry though. I also made STL versions, so they're replicable. Time to position them. I also add the two finishing plastics and 3D print the extra elements that form the left and right kickers. Of course, including special spacers and two lights, but without automation, which we'll see later. Now let's talk about rebounds. A pinball machine is far more complex than it seems. It requires careful design, even just to calculate the height of the rings. I need to make all the ball bumpers, but if the height isn't correct, this happens. The bumper center must be slightly higher than the ball center of mass, similar to a billiard cushion. The 3D model goes straight to print, and I make several. The hole has to be extremely precise, so I prefer to make it slightly smaller and then ream it with a 3mm bit. I ran several tests, some were too stiff, others too tight. In the end I found the right size in two color variations. The black version turned out slightly flexible and soft. So it can even be pressed in by hand. Nice, I must say, though I would have preferred them in polished metal. The playfield is filled with these little cylinders. They make the ball bounce in rigid spots while also adding aesthetic detail. You need a lot of them, but for now I'm filling only the first half. I also made alternative models using silicone tubing bought on AliExpress as the rebound surface. A cheaper option, but with less coverage. And there are also a few other scattered designs. Okay, but how is the ball passage detected? At first, I came up with a simple solution. IR sensors. They worked great, and I even designed neat little mounts for easy installation under the playfield. They detected the ball's passage perfectly, but they also picked up light reflections and even my hand. Not ideal. So here's the solution, proximity sensors. They detect metal at a distance of about 3 millimeters. And the best part, they're cheaper than traditional micro switches and don't break. After passing my test, I decided to use them everywhere with 3D printed supports to hold them firmly. I also bought them on AliExpress for about 60 cents each and got them all ready. The sensor fits tightly to avoid any play and its position is adjusted with a set screw. Since it's exposed, it must sit perfectly flush. It needs to detect the ball without making it jump. I'll use about 15 of them. The key is to keep them flush with the playfield and thanks to their mounts, they're fixed with just two small screws. I install all the sensors on the first half of the playfield. Done. All sensors are now in place. And now the fun begins. 
making the real guides out of chrome aluminum profiles. For the corners, I wanted to use aluminum, but they actually turned out great in PLA. I designed them with reinforcement brackets and even a base to raise the profile 3mm above the playfield. Here they are, ready. But how did I bend them? Experience, guys. That's learned by doing. You just need to find an object with a similar diameter and bend around it. This way, I mount the first one on the left side and with the same shared support, I place the other above it. For the other profiles, bends can be done by hand too, but be careful. Aluminum has memory, so you need to make small corrections until you get the desired shape. Now I mount the shooter lane rails, both internal and external, and that's the last one. Beautiful. And if you're wondering why I raised them, don't worry, I'll explain later. There's a good reason. To complete some zones with 3D printing, I also made end caps with rods fitted with O-rings for super bounces. Naturally, I did the same on the right side. Now let's add the two flippers. I already showed you how to build them in episode 4, so here we go straight to assembly. And the ball shooter too. Both are now mounted. Finally, the first launch with everything installed. Guys, it really feels like playing with a real pinball machine. The ball launches, the automation works perfectly. I swear, I didn't think it would turn out this good. I can't believe it. My dream is coming true. Just think, what you're seeing now is only a very small part of how it will look in the end. Building a pinball machine, guys, is something truly wonderful. It's a fascinating journey where even the smallest piece before it can take shape must first pass through our mind in a virtuous process of ideas and solutions. It's something that, in the end, can't really be described with words. And if I've come this far, guys, it's mostly thanks to you. If you enjoyed all of this, I ask only for a like as a reward. And let me know in the comments what you didn't like, so I can improve. Because in episode 6, we'll raise the bar even higher. You'll see the entire playfield completed with ball saver coils, the two kickers as powerful as in real pinball machines, and much more. All the way to the suspended rails, built with a unique and special technique. You'll find all this in episode 6. <laughs> Over the years, I've built many DIY objects that work perfectly, and you can replicate them too. If you want, you can subscribe to this channel, and when the community gets bigger, I might bring you even more beautiful and interesting projects. Give a like if you want more videos like this.